gathering data now, but we've we've seen some significant improvement in Scioto County, uh, and that's as a result again of coordinated effort between the troopers, DCI, the Bureau of Workers Comp. Uh, we'll have a full report. Uh, the numbers are are really um, encouraging. Uh, again, we want to get them all together before we get into them, but uh, we're, we're starting to see some real progress. So, um, I always ask the patrol, what is it that you need to do a better job? This was one, a couple of things, and this was one that we thought we could move forward on. We assume there'll be more. You know, we work, for example, off of this area with the SWAT team. I mean, I'm very interested in making sure that the patrol has what they need on the SWAT team, particularly robotics that would be able to, uh, to aid the troopers when, uh, when they have a, a difficult situation for a SWAT team. And they're working now on robotic improvement, technological improvement, so they can be safer and still be able to do their job. So, you know, we're all working together. Um, I have a, you know, able to talk with the troopers on a really informal basis. They tell me things. Uh, I had a guy up here from Athens I was talking to. You guys didn't know about this. And I started asking him about, you know, how many cars he stopped and what's his run bus. And he's looking at me sideways. And after about 20 minutes, He's looking at me sideways. I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the governor here. He said, don't tell me what I told you. I said, no, your secret's safe with me. Senator Hughes. Thank you, Governor. Currently, as we discussed, in terms of the hidden departments as we have right now, there is no crime, no offense in the code. What this bill that we're talking about doing will create is an F4, which is telling the fourth degree, Carries a maximum of 18 months in jail or a five thousand dollar fine. Now, if, like in this case right here, where drugs were found in it, and say the cocaine or marijuana, whatever the case might be, was a felony in the first degree, under this proposed legislation, it would be one less. Otherwise, it would be an F2, in the example I just gave you. What this is is another tool for law enforcement to stop the flow as the government <coughs> the drugs coming in here. And this is this bill will save lives and will impact people's lives. I want to thank the governor personally for his leadership on this, as well as controlling all law enforcement for what they're doing every day, as well as uh, our dog here. With that, I turn back to the bill. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, questions, either on this or? Is, is the phone number 677 something new, or is it just the publication of it that's, uh, that's something new? The number's new, and uh, I, sh I should say that uh, the cell phone providers in Ohio have provided this at no charge. Uh, the signs are going up, uh, courtesy of the drug dealers and drug traffickers. Uh, we use drug forfeiture money to pay for the signs that are going up. The Department of Transportation has been incredible in producing the signs, and the, those that number will ring in just as our 18777 patrol number rings in. And anyone can easily dial 18777 patrol. It's a challenge, uh, but at the time, 12 years ago, it was a good number. It'll ring into the closest post. If it is something outside of our jurisdiction, we'll forward it to the uh, appropriate jurisdiction. And we're also sharing that information with our criminal intelligence unit as we get those tips in. I will tell you uh, that that number, in a meeting with the governor, one of our best, and, and I think probably a world-renowned drug addiction trooper, uh, the governor asked me, what do you need? And he, uh, he gave a couple things, and I held my breath as what the trooper would say is what we need. But one of the things he said is we need the public cell and this pound 677 number will allow the public to help us. And uh, believe it or not, we had a meeting in November with our state police uh, organizations, agencies next to us. And after that meeting, one of our partners from the Ontario Provincial Police was driving back up I-71, took the training that he had here in the academy, saw someone snorting something in a car, which is a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Happened to see a trooper at a crossover, pulled over, Ended up, uh, the driver was arrested by the trooper for possession of cocaine and, and being impaired. So we need the public's help uh, to be able to do it. So it is a new number, a courtesy of the cell phone companies who have provided it to the state of Ohio for no charge. And I believe uh, all the toll-free numbers are certainly not unique nationally. I think this system and this number is unique because Ohio is at the front of the pack of the effort. Colonel, you uh, obviously it's a very sophisticated vehicle here. How often do you run into the hidden compartment type of vehicles? And can you describe any of the other kinds you run into that maybe aren't as high tech? <laughs> Some of the uh, compartments we run into are uh, 
uh, natural cavity compartments which have been modified, uh, for example, maybe underneath the floorboard of a minivan. Um, as you see from this map, and I keep pushing to uh, point you to this map, uh, organizations of many of the drugs coming are coming in from Mexico. Uh, some of the uh, high-end, high-expensive pills like ecstasy are coming in from Canada. Ohio is an absolute critical distribution point, both within the highway system, because of our location in east and west, major metropolitan areas. Uh, a lot of them are our hydraulics, Alan. A lot of the uh, hidden compartments we have are hydraulic um, compartments, things that you, you've seen on TV. Uh, some of the cartels are building submarines. Uh, a submarine is more difficult to build than modifying a vehicle. Uh, these are fairly expensive, sophisticated things that we also know uh, based on some of the interviews that we've done with them, that they've been doing this for years. The same vehicle has been used for years. And unfortunately, one last point on Senator Hughes, uh, his legislation, uh, under current law, if we stop a car and know there's drugs that had been in it, but there aren't drugs in it now, there is no offense. Yeah, you know, I, think the, I think the other thing we have to, you know, and again, this number, you know, you wonder, well, who's going to call this number? Well, I don't, I, I've just been astounded by the amount of, uh, of illegal drugs in the state. We moved a little bit there. I think the number was a 69, $69 million. I mean, that's a lot of drugs uh, to be, to be, uh, to be uh, caught, confiscated. And people have to realize, these, these, a lot of these people that are dealing these drugs are after our kids. And um, so mom and dad, you've got to get, get angry and you, you've got to get vigilant. I mean, one of the things that we learned after 9-11 is if you see something suspicious, report it. I think that was one of the reasons why uh, the, the, uh, the guy in the car in, the, uh, in Times Square got caught. It was a vigilant public. Uh, people that, that pay attention make a difference. And just remember, they're after your kids. So when you see something or you suspect something, <clears throat> call this number. Now, Colonel, maybe it's important for people to know, if they call that number, have they now put themselves in harm's way? Is this an anonymous uh, situation? How does it work? The number is geolocated, as with the 187, so we'll bring into the uh, closest position in many cases. Um, it, is, it is not um, like a crime shopper's number, but in many cases, people will call us and give us a tip and not identify themselves, and we'll take the information when they identify themselves. Okay, thank you. The sheriff's going to say a few things. I'm sure Scott's going to go in a few minutes. Sheriff? All right. Well, uh, I guess my job is to uh, collect your appetite on the event that's coming up here very soon. And then, uh, we're going to be working with the State Eye Control Sheriff's Office. And it's uh, a cooperative event. Uh, it's called Operation Shield. And uh, we're present at this time still working out the operational plans, the logistics, uh, just coordinating all the different resources that we have. We're very excited about uh, this operation. And just briefly, we're going to be uh, in a targeted area, designated area, where we're going to be looking for drug traffickers, driving vehicles similar to this. Uh, we're going to be looking for DUI, people who are out there driving drunk. Uh, there's going to be a warrant sweep and just general traffic control type uh, situations. So uh, we're excited about it. And you guys are going to be notified about it uh, as we get closer to the dates. And I hope that you guys will be able to partner with us a little bit on this and get the information on this. I mean, this is not unprecedented. I mean, in New York, it is not unusual, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but, but they, will, they will take 25, 30, 40 police cars through an area, and they show the flag, and it disrupts those people who are involved in crime and drug dealing or whatever. And the idea that we're going to show it means that people that are coming through this state, they just may get grabbed here. So the idea of really showing the flag, driving the force up, can make a real difference. So uh, it's, it's an exciting, uh, exciting process and uh, program. We're, we're very excited. So I got to you guys are going to be too. Thank you.